Welcome everyone back for another beer review and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Goose Island Beer Company and they are out of Chicago, Illinois and this is their Christmas IPA and this is the 2022 release. So they're calling this one a festively smooth American IPA that comes in at 7.5% alcohol by volume, 38 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this can is, but it does have a Best Buy date of March 1st of 2023. And we're just over, a little bit over two months away from that date. So we should be fine. Now, I didn't plan on grabbing this one or even reviewing it this year, but looking to round out a uh, mix sixer at my local Wegmans grocery store and I saw that they had this and it was in date by a decent you know margin and I was like you know what let's give it a go because I've never had their Christmas IPA and it just you know let's give it a go I not much else to say about it um, I did look on their website and they called this one a malt forward American IPA so I wonder if they're kind of trying to compete with uh, Sierra Nevada Sierra Nevada's uh, celebration app I don't know I don't know if that's the case or not or just doing whatever they want to do, but yeah, 7.5%, 38 IBUs, old school American IPA. I'm picturing, you know, more like caramel malt and maybe like bready flavors. Again, more malt forward, but you know, decent hot punch as well. So let's give this a pour, see how this goes as I, you know, pretty much spill it everywhere. Give it a hard pour here at the end. Try to make sure whatever is on the side here does not leak all the way down. And of course it did. So let me grab off camera paper towels because I forgot to put them at, at the bottom of me so I had to grab them off camera whatever it doesn't matter it's been a while since I've spilled any beer so should be fine so we'll put it over there like that and yeah so this has an old school American IPA look it has it like burnt orange kind of caramel a little bit of like a golden color at the bottom here this this glass is weird even when you hold it up to the light, like down here, it's way lighter at the base. And up here, it's more like a dark kind of orange vibe. Has about a two finger aggressive pour of this, uh, you know, we'll say lightly tan colored head. Decent carbonation because this has the nucleation, the etching at the bottom that pr produces the carbonation. But yeah, looks like a nice, a nice American IPA. Let's get nose. Dude, this smells. When they say a mall forward IPA, yeah, this to me, the aroma smells like an aged, old school American double IPA. So what I get typically out of aged American um, double IPAs, like I'm, when I say I'm talking age, I'm talking like they're typically like five, six months old. Not that I drink a lot of, you know, half year old uh, American double IPAs, but it ha it's happened in the past. And I get that orange marmalade character definitely getting in here. It's like a caramel drizzled orange marmalade, like on toasted white bread. So you picture a piece of toast. You spread some orange marmalade on it, and you drizzle like a caramel syrup. That's what I'm getting right from the get-go. Which, honestly, I never did that before. I've had orange marmalade on toast before. Never put like a caramel or maybe chocolate drizzle or something. I think that might be fun. Maybe I have to try that at some point. Yeah, so that's all the malt character, right? So when they say this is a malt forward I American IPA, yeah, for sure. But I'm getting a little bit of like a hop character. It's more of like a slightly resinous pine touch of earthiness, maybe like a floral aspect. But I'm telling you right now, it smells It smells like so many aged, old-school American double IPAs. It's 7.5%, skirting the lines of a, you know Imperial Double. If you're hot butcher for the world, 7.5% is a double IPA. If you're some other breweries, maybe not. All depends. doesn't really matter now. But yeah, it doesn't smell bad because I actually like this character. I just know that the beer is aged. So one of two things happening here. Because it's malt forward, it's kind of giving me that aged uh, double IPA vibe. Or... This might have a little age. Maybe they put a six month, a six month uh, Best Buy date on it, so this beer might be almost four months old right now. Could be. Either way, it doesn't smell bad. Let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Oh, oh, you're, you're still. I was just searching for flavor. That's all I was doing. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. You know, I don't get tongue-tied often, especially if you watch the channel, you know I like to talk, probably more so than the average beer tuber, more so than 98% of the beer tubers out there. You know, a lot of times my reviews are a bit longer, 
a bit uh, long-winded. It happens. Um, I like to talk. There's not much to talk about here. We'll go body mouthfeel, try to review it like I do a regular beer, but there's just not a lot here. Body, medium body, 7.5% I'm okay with. I will give them this. The mouthfeel, while it has a crisp nature to it, this is a bit more soft and smoother than I anticipated, but it does say festively smooth. So I'm not disagreeing with them. I think they're right there. But body and mouthfeel is the like driving factor right now of me taking multiple sips because the body mouthfeel is nice. But the flavor, I have not had a beer here on the channel in a long while, maybe years, that is lacking in any substantial flavor. Like this is a time out before we get crazy here and you think I, I don't like this. I, I don't dislike this beer and I don't like this beer. Why? There's just not a lot going on. There's like, it's devoid of a lot of flavor. I'm kind of dumbfounded because the nose, again, screamed older IPA and I would thought it would be a bit more of a malt bomb based on the nose, but what I'm even tasting here just doesn't have a lot of flavor. So we'll try, we'll try to get some flavor out of here. A very, there's like a ghost of a caramel orange vibe to the malt in this one. Well, caramel probably from the malt, the orange probably from the hops. But everything I said in the nose dialed back about 80% because I get a little bit of caramel, a little bit of the orange, maybe a touch of that like toasted brown bread. But it's just because the nose indicated those flavors. So I tell you, okay, it's there. But man, it's just not substantial. As it passes through the palate, the beer starts to dry out and bitter out. This has a semi to full on dry finish and more to the semi dry part of the, I'd say, yeah, leaning more semi dry than full. And it has a mild to moderate bitterness uh, right smack dab in the middle. And the bitterness is like, like a orange pith, orange rind, kind of something in that, in that realm. Here's where I'll give them credit. Is it festively smooth? It's smooth. I don't know if it's festively smooth. Definitely smooth. Body's nice. Mouth feels nice. And 7.5%, a little warming in the chest, nothing on the palate. So it's a very easy drinking 7.5% malt forward or festively smooth American IPA. But there's just not a lot of flavor here. And I've drank, you know, so many mainstream beers at this point. I've reviewed a lot from some of the bigger, you know, macro and microbreweries. And I can't say that I've ever had a beer that kind of is devoid of flavor to this level. Like there's just not much happening here. It's, it's, it's again, my mind and my brain, is, it's like cramping because I'm trying to like stretch to give you tasting notes and I just can't. Caramel, orange, toasted brown bread or toasted uh, white bread, just very little. It's not bad. Like, this is not a drain port. Like, ah. oh. All right, so Christmas IPA from Goose Island, the 2022 release. I'm gonna give this a, uh, I just gotta, it's just, it's just, it's there. It's a liquid, it's 7.5%. I'm gonna give this a high three out of five. I'm going to go 3.1 out of five. It's the best I can do on this beer. I like the, you know, the artwork on here, the label, it's cool, you know, sweater-esque. The fact that I got this in a mixed six pack at Wegmans, like, it, it's, I just, I was hoping for more, you know, I'm hoping for more. Uh, price point availability, uh, I don't know about the availability. I'd imagine wherever you see Gusani, you should see that uh, that pair. Uh, we saw it here, clearly. Um, and price point, I have no idea. Because again, I got in the mix six location or section of my local Wegmans. It was $12.99 a mix six pack. Um, I'd imagine you'll probably do 10, 11 bucks for a six pack of this. I can honestly say this, I don't know how it tasted super fresh. So if somebody out there had this relatively fresh, what did you think about it? Uh, as you can see, I'm a little bit disappointed. I didn't expect like, you know, Christmas miracles from this beer, like it was going to be like the best IPA. As soon as I read, uh, you know, Malt Ford, American IPA, um, you know, I kind of tempered my expectations a little bit because I'm like, all right, we'll see how it is. And then I smelled it and I was like, okay, it smells like an aged, you know, old school American double IPA. It doesn't taste like anything really. Like it's very just subtle and light. It's just disappointing. So if you've had this year's release or prior releases, let me know what you thought about this one. Also, if you had this year's release and you drank it fresh, or you know, fresher than I did, let me know, uh, especially if you enjoyed it or maybe you hated it. But at the end of the day, this is the best way I can sum up this beer. I'm trying to, you know, I, I, I don't ever shit on beer because, you know, 
somebody might pick this up and love it and everybody has a different palate so for me to be like that's a trash beer or whatever i that i i don't do that you you'll never come to my channel and see me just absolutely trash beers because i always am of the understanding that there are people out there that would love a beer like this meanwhile there might be if i give this a five out of five there's people out there that probably have the same reaction i do so it's on the eye of the beholder we have different palettes you're gonna have different opinions no matter you know what's going on and who comes to your channel and says stuff or who's on youtube like me saying stuff we all have different opinions to some degree so i'll never trash a beer but i will say this i to be nice about this the the, the nicest thing i could say about this or the easiest way to sum this up with being nice is that it's just, it's a beer. Like that's all I can, it's a beer. Like it's, it's, it's an IPA. Like there's nothing bad about this one, but there's also a nothing good. It's just here and it exists. So uh, anyway, this is the last holiday slash Christmas themed beer I'm reviewing this year. Um, so yeah, that's a bummer that I went out on a, a down note to some degree because yeah, I was hoping for a little bit more out of this one, but it happens. Most of the holiday slash Christmas themed beers this year were delicious. So apologize, probably gonna be a longer review, but whatever, you know, hopefully you guys understand where I'm coming from with this one, but whatever. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by. 7.5%, like I said, it's one of the best things is like, it doesn't really drink like a huge beer, a little bit warming, but outside of that, like at least it's festively smooth as they say. Anyway, till the next one. Cheers.